Mandy 1v1 versus every brawler in Brawl Stars. Mandy is the chromatic brawler of the season, so if you like her, you're going to want to get that brawl pass, and if you do that, use code LEX. It supports this channel at no extra cost to you. Now, she is a long-range sharpshooter with a twist. Now, I'll explain her abilities as we move along, but let's start this off against the other long-range brawlers. Now, Mandy has a very unique ability that if she stands still, she gains extra range, making her the longest range brawler in the game. However, we can't totally utilize that range or these tests would just look like this. Yeah, that'd be a crap video. So as she squares off against all of the other long range brawlers, you'll notice that she has a shield around her. That's because her second star power gives her a 20% damage reduction shield whenever she is standing still. Now that's very useful in these tests except against a few brawlers like Piper. She loses to Piper because her shots travel faster than Mandy's but if you equip Mandy's first star power that gives her a speed increase to her projectile and she wins. Now that shot has also increased in damage since Brawl Talk and now deals 1,800 damage and that makes her pretty even with most of the long range brawlers like Brock. Now in a game, you might be able to stand back way out of range and use that extra range that she gets when she stands still, but really, when was the last time that you just stood still in a match? I mean, it's niche. It's an interesting mechanic, but I'm just not sure how useful it'll actually be. Now clearly, if you were to put a tank toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mandy, she will get wrecked real quick. So instead of just showing every tank winning easily, I put them at range and had them run towards her to see if they could get to her and take her down before she killed them. Which is kind of like Squid Game, but like less nightmares. Now most of the tanks didn't have much issue running her down, and yes, in a real game as Mandy you wouldn't just stand there, but I really couldn't think of a fair test for all brawlers involved here. The only brawlers that got eliminated in Squid Game, I mean, I mean in these tests, were BB and Buster. Now BB just didn't have enough health to make the trip and neither did Buster. But again, toe to toe, those two brawlers destroy Mandy. It's not even close. I went ahead and let Sam use his super to run up there, but that's only because his super is basically his entire identity in the game. Now in a game, this one's pretty self-explanatory. Don't let the tank get close to you? Now you can use her first gadget to aid you in this. It slows enemies down for two and a half seconds and that could be just what you need to escape the tank or finish off the job. Now normally the throwers don't win any matches in these tests, but our boy Grom is able to flip the script here and he actually beats Mandy using that X Factor star power. That victory is short lived though as Barley makes a good effort but comes up short. Speaking of short, Sprout follows in the same fashion and Dynamite isn't far behind. And of course Tick is still Tick and dies almost instantly. Now in a game, this is a pretty good matchup for the throwers, but it's not all sunshine and roses. She actually has two things up her sleeve to deal with throwers. First off is her second gadget, which when activated, her next shot will pierce walls, which could move throwers, but the bigger one is her super. This super will span the entire length of a 3v3 map in about 75% of a showdown map. Not only that, it passes through walls while dealing 3,750 damage. That's easily enough pressure to move a thrower or just one shot tick. Now while we might like seeing tick get one shot, the assassins like seeing the low hit points on Mandy. Now most assassins are licking their chops when it comes to the long range brawlers and Mandy, well she's the main course. As you can see the assassins don't have much issue taking her down even though she deals a pretty significant amount of damage. Now there are some exceptions to that and she is able to beat a couple of brawlers. For instance Crow and his three hit points isn't enough to survive although he does make it a close match. Now I tested Daryl like a tank and he wins but in a game you're most likely going to be doing this and of course he wins there. Now Buzz drops the whistle on her and wins easy and Fang showed her the sole of his shoe. Now as bad as these interactions for Mandy, in a real game, it'll probably be even worse. She is a prime target for the assassins. She has no knockback, no escape mechanism, and not very much health. So if you're facing off against an assassin, be sure to keep track of them or you just might end up like this. Now once again, Mandy outranges all of the spawners, but placed within each other's range, they do pretty decent. Nita is able to get a win here by just a small amount, while Jessie falls just short, and then her cousin Penny comes in and well, yeah, she doesn't quite make it either. 
Neither one has the damage to take her out, but Mr. P in that double suitcase bounce is able to just finish the job before he goes down. All of these matches were actually pretty close, and in the game, it's going to be pretty close as well. The only real question is, can Mandy hit her shots? And if that's a yes, then you'll do just fine. If not, well then, yeah, you're in for a long day. To do well, these brawlers will need their spawners for support. And speaking of support... Now the support brawlers don't have the highest damage output, but some of them do have decent health like Poco. Now Byron still hasn't won one of these interactions ever, and that's not changing today, but Pam is able to get one in the win column for the support brawlers. That, however, proved to be the only bright spot in this category as Jean goes down swinging and the other new brawler, Gray, falls ever so short of winning thanks to Mandy and her shield. And that star power paid dividends once again as Ruffs isn't able to sniff out a win. Now, in a real game, this is not a good matchup for the support brawlers. Mandy will be able to utilize her normal range and gun down the opposition while staying outside of their range. And as a support brawler, you're really going to need to rely on your teammates to chip in or get someone who can get up close to her and deal some damage. And our next group does just that. Now, this group of brawlers don't specialize in going after the long range brawlers, but there is little doubt that if they get in range, they can easily take her out. Ems shreds Mandy with that triple damage, and Mandy is looking for a refund after Griff throws his coins. Lola dispatches Mandy in a close fight, but Spike gets double-tapped by the Magma Mandy en route to the group's first loss. Now normally here's where I'd say Colette can't finish the job without her super, but the funny thing is, even with her super, if Mandy has that shield active, she can withstand three shots and a super from Colette. Kind of crazy. Now in a game setting, you're probably not going to be the target of many tank busters. They normally don't get that far up the map, but if one does and you're in the area, you're going to be in trouble and looking for teammates to help you out or utilize some of those gadgets or your super. Now our next set of brawlers are the mid-range and they are going to get outranged by Mandy. I mean, it's kind of like right there in the name, but if they do work themselves close up, they'll actually do pretty well. Surge is able to shoot his shots with speed and versatility, kind of like Ben Tim. But Carl's shots travel too slow and he gets rocked. But Terra pulls the Uno reverse card and easily comes out on top. Otis makes a splash by winning by the tiniest of margins and Max got her wings clipped as she comes down from the sugar rush. Stu makes it a close fight but leaves punch drunk and Janet got her pilot's license revoked after that loss. Puns aside, the mid-range brawlers are going to have a tough time, all things being equal, which of course they never are. Even if they can work themselves into range, they're going to have a tough time finishing the job. They're going to have to do a good job of shucking in a jive and to stand a chance. It's a dancing reference that nobody got. But maybe our last set of brawlers can do a bit better. Now our final category are the control brawlers, and this is an interesting group because some of them have quite a long range to contest Mandy. Gale would have won had it not been for Mandy's shield, and Amber is in the same boat. They both lose, but it's real close. Lou is, shockingly enough, right on par with Mandy damage-wise, and Meg, in her normal form, falls woefully short. Our final brawler is Squeak, who goes down before his last shot can get off as normal. So all of these brawlers came to fight, and it was kind of a mixed bag, but how good do I think Mandy will be? For a sharpshooter, I think she is kind of just average. That's not to say that she isn't good, because she is a solid brawler, but she's not exceptional. There are some places where I think that her kit will do really well, mainly her super. Some heist maps where they're pretty open, she's going to be able to get damage on the safe regardless of where she is on the map. And in Bounty, she has the range to compete really well on those open maps. Bounty will probably be her best mode, but maybe some knockout as well. The deal is, I'm just not totally sold on her extra range mechanic. There will be times when it works extremely well, and other times it just won't be useful whatsoever. That being said, her super is absolutely bonkers and her gadgets are well thought out. All things considered, I'd give her a 6.5 out of 10 because while she isn't broken, I think she's a solid or average brawler. So that's it for all three new brawlers coming into Brawl Stars. Which one is your favorite? Let me know down below. And as always, until next time, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Peace out.